Dan Ullman, Matt Burney are taking a look at some three-year-old fillies on the turf at Del Mar on Saturday. And the Grade 2 San Clemente Stakes should be a great betting race with a big field. All of our stakes previews presented by DRF Bets. Check out this new promotion for DRF Bets members. It's the Weekend Warrior Bonus Series. Earn up to a $180 bonus for the Travers and Pacific Classic. Here's how it works. DRF Bets members must bet $25 on one horse to win in race one at Saratoga and or Del Mar to qualify on Saturdays and Sundays. Win or lose, the player will receive a $10 bonus for it, each race in which they participate, and you can earn up to a $180 bonus for the Travers and the P Classic. Now here's the field for the Grade 2 San Clemente Stakes. Again, it is a big field, and I'd like to start talking about the number two, Miss Bad Behavior, Matt. And I thought this one ran quite well last time out in the Grade 3 Providencia Stakes way back on April the 7th. I thought she set a legitimate pace while pressed by Paved, a horse that came back to win the Grade 2 Honeymoon Stakes with an 87 buyer. She ran well. The winner just ran by her in the lane, but she is tactical. She can be forwardly placed. She has a great inside post position. I think she's the one to beat. I think nine to two on the line is fair. I'm a little worried about this layoff. Is it a prep for the Del Mar Oaks? Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly possible. I, I think you can almost look at that for many of these girls in here, though, if this is nothing more than a means to an end to get to the Del Mar Oaks. But at the same time, we've talked about it, how valuable a graded stakes placing is, let alone a graded stakes victory. Uh, I, I like Miss Bad Behavior. She hasn't done anything wrong in any one of her eight lifetime starts. You brought up the tactical ability that she has. She can go to the lead. She can sit just off. Um, I think her best game in a race like this, considering it looks like there's going to be a very, very spirited pace, would be to take off and sit just off of a target rather than get into a prolonged duel with anyone. But look, I, I have no knock about anyone that looks at her and says she's the horse to beat. One of the horses that figures to be on or near the lead is the number 10 War Heroine, who defeated Miss Bad Behavior going down the hill in War Heroine's turf debut way back in February. Now, War Heroine has come back and won. She is two for two on the lawn. The big question for this speedy daughter of Lonro is distance. Can she get the trip, especially if she is pressured on a fast pace? Yeah, that really, that's the, the you know, the, the million dollar question for her is can she handle the distance and can she handle other heat? Because thus far in three lifetime starts, she really hasn't shown too much of a rating gear. I know, she, I guess she sat slightly in that sweet life three starts back, but really her best game is her speed. And if you think that she's going to go out there and if you think other horses are going to push her, Boy, all of a sudden, if I were backing her, I'd be sweating that final quarter of a mile. The 11 pursuing the dream. Timeform US has this horse very prominently figured in the pace projector. We check that out right now. I'm surprised. And the great thing about the pace projector is you can handicap it. I think War Heroine's going to make the front in here. But pursuing the dream, the 11, we have her out there on the lead. She tried that last time out against one Expos. It didn't work out. She's cross-centered on Friday. This is pre-scratches and changes, this preview. Yeah, you know, I think she's just a little bit exposed at this point against better horses anyway. Two starts back, didn't think there was any real excuse that Senorita it hasn't come back sparkling. And she had a pretty good trip, all things considered. I know the winner treasuring was the one that was cutting out the fractions, but I didn't see any real excuse. And then again, from a speed figure standpoint, she's just a little bit light. Let's talk about Miss Sienna, the number four. Mike Smith gets the mount blinkers on for a very good trainer in Phil D'Amato. This horse has only raced once in North America. I didn't think that trip had to work out, chasing on the outside. The blinkers might get her focused. You do have to respect this barn. And these European horses, they can benefit from a hot pace up front. Yeah, I thought about picking her. I picked her second here. I kind of feel like, you know, that honeymoon, you alluded to it a little bit. She was wide every step of the way. And okay, she didn't have any punch down the lane. That was her first start over here. Now the blinkers go on. Second start, you get Smith aboard. I think there's a lot to like, perhaps other than the price. I believe she's pretty short on the morning line, somewhere in that six to one range. I would want north of that. Let's talk about the one two finishers of a recent entry level optional claimer going down the hill at Santa Anita. That's the three Flametta, the one rock and ready. They both came from well off of fast pace and it makes me wonder did that race fall apart and play into their hands and do they need that kind of setup to win remember that setup was at six and a half i'm a little bit more comfortable with rock and ready going the two turns although flametta beat her last time yeah really that kind of felt like a scenario where those are horses that like you say they're more forwardly placed on route of ground and just because everybody else was stopping going down the hill that the two of them came along i thought they both finished well but at the same time there's a part of me that looks at it and says, well, from a speed figure standpoint, you're going to need to up your game considerably. Your best races so far was that last one going six and a half furlongs. 
I, I don't have much question that they can get the distance, but again, can they get the distance faster than everyone else? I'm not convinced. The number nine West Palm Beach has been bet hard in both North American starts. The first to win back on March the 16th. And last time out, Simon Callahan told our Steve Anderson that she might have been coming into that race with a couple of little feet issues, and that might have compromised her performance. So if you want to draw a line through that race and just focus on the March 16th performance, you've got a closer in a race packed with speed with some ability who might be the best price she's ever been in her career. You're right. I mean, she's been hammered in both of those starts here stateside. The one thing else I'll say about that, Senorita, look at the chart and formulator. That pace held up entirely. Basically, there was very little running going on from the back of the pack, so I don't want to hold that against her. She's another one I considered making a play in here. The only other thing that I would throw out there, and it's probably too early to tell, but take a look at the racing on Thursday and Friday out at Santa Anita, uh, Del Mar. We're, we're at Del Mar now, not Santa Anita. It feels like on opening day, it was very difficult to make up much ground on the turf course. Be cognizant of that going forward, because if it continues to trend that way, these closers might be up against it. Yeah, the only horse that seemed to make up ground was in the ocean <laughs> side, where I had the lead a 16th of a mile to go, and they ran me down. What a surprise. Sorry. The eight is Animosity. How good is Animosity? She has won sprinting on turf. She has won going long on synth. I thought she ran just fine in the honeymoon last time out, the first time she was tested for class against a very good filly in paved. And I at least like the fact that in that debut, she showed she can pass horses. I think Drayden Van Dyke realizes that war heroin is fast. I think he's going to break. He's going to let that horse go. And I think he's going to try to sit in the second flight. She's got to run a little faster, but there's something here. The other key for her, I think, anyway, you go back and watch that honeymoon. She was pretty eager early on. She wanted to go, and, and Giovanni Franco had a hard time getting her to relax. If Van Dyke can get her to relax a little bit and switch off early, like you say, she's shown that she can pass horses. I think she's got a major chance if she can relax. If she's her own worst enemy early on, she's a little bit keyed up, that could work against her. A fellow daughter of Animal Kingdom is the five, Ahimsa. We have a formulator fact for trainer Peter Erton. The past two years with three-year-old turf horses going off a 45 to 60 day layoff, Erton's 36% with a $4.01 ROI. I promise you that's a good formulator fact. Ahimsa's uh, race on April the 27th, good effort to be sure. What happened last time out in the Black Pearl? I know that was a fast pace, and I know that she was dueling, but the horse that she was dueling with was 17 to one, and she finished way ahead of Ahimsa. Yeah, I have to be honest with you. That That is the main reason that I looked at her and said, I don't really have much interest. The running style combined with the fact that she stopped as badly as she did in that most recent start, perhaps there was something else that we're unaware of that happened. But boy, now all of a sudden you're going two turns for the first time. You're facing much better company than you did in that most recent start. I, I got to be honest, I'm sitting back and saying, you got to prove to me you can do it. Let's talk about one of your favorites, the 14, Ali's Candy. Undefeated from three starts. She's won on synth. She's won on dirt. She's got a big turf pedigree. The dam was a graded stakes winner on the turf. She won that graded stake in her turf debut, and she has already fold one first turf winner. Formulator fact for Ali's Candy's trainer, Bill Morey. Past three years, last out winner, dirt to turf, 36%. $3.50 ROI. We know distance isn't an issue. How worried are you about this post and the fact that she likes to be somewhat close to the pace? Yeah, to be honest, that that's the only real question I have. And I, it sounds a little bit silly because she hasn't actually run on turf, but you brought up the pedigree and you brought up all the sort of situations with formulator facts with Maury. The outside post is no bargain. I mean, breaking from 14, going a mile. I suppose the only good thing is I know that she doesn't have to have the lead. And you know what? If she has to give up a little bit of ground going into the first turn, let's say she's three, three and a half paths off the rail, I would think I would take that in a heartbeat. I think she sits just off of those shorter distance horses or the horses stretching out. And I, I just kind of feel like she, in many ways, to me, is the horse to beat in here with the exception maybe of Ms. Bad Behavior. Let's talk about a couple others before we get to our picks. Dulce Ride, another one trained by Richard Baltus, made a nice impression going down the hill in her first start for this barn and her first start off this long layoff. And I think she acts like she'll go longer. She popped to her left lead at the wire, but to me, I think that was more a sign of her being a little bit green. You saw that her ears were up at the end. I agree with you. I kind of feel like she's an interesting alternative. If you're looking for a big, big bomb in here, I think she's one that you can consider. I thought Streak of Luck ran fine, but just fine against much weaker horses last time out. Calbred's 1X. She certainly got a pace to run at. Look at that half mile split, 45 and yeah. 3. The race was won by Maya Antilli, who came from the back of the pack, but Streak of Luck, you could argue, was definitely helped by that situation. And after 10 starts, I'm not sure how much more improvements left. 
Yeah, and that race hasn't come back all that strong thus far. I know they're older horses, but we kind of know what they are at this point. I think she's overmatched. Lexington Grace won last time out of 1X going a mile at Santa Anita, but I'm not sure if I love that race. That pace held together despite it being color-coded red at time form, and I wonder if the 80 buyer might be her ceiling right now. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. To me, I'm looking at the Providencia as a more representative running line, and clearly that's not good enough. She was beaten by almost five lengths in here by horses like Fatal Barre, who we know what she's capable of, and Miss Bad Behavior. I look at Lexington Grace and say, minor award at best. I'm going to make a case for Miss Painter, perhaps underneath at a gigantic price, because she ran a fig with a good trip, two starts back, going a mile at Santa Anita that would put her right there with the top contenders in this race. And last time in the honeymoon, she was chasing, and all in all, it wasn't a bad performance at all to finish third. I think she has shown some ability on the turf, and with a fast pace in front, she could come running late and spice things up in the exotics. Considering the honeymoon was her first start off of a little bit of a layoff, if you like animosity, and I know that there's a case to be made for animosity being lightly raced, but this filly's lightly raced as well. I remember her debut at Gulfstream. I thought it was awesome. It might have been the first race of the entire meeting. I think there's a scenario where if you run that race two starts back, she's got a big, big chance in here, and she's going to be many times over the price of a horse like animosity in this spot. Top picks in a big field pre-scratches and program changes. The San Clemente, you're going with Ollie's Candy and out of the gate horse watch for you. You liked her last time out in the summertime, Oaks, and heck, it wouldn't surprise me if she could run on broken glass. Yeah, yeah I, she just feels kind of like a stone cold runner. Now, maybe the circumstances are gonna be in this spot here on Saturday afternoon, but from a talent standpoint, I think she's every bit as good, if not better than everyone else. And you can look at it as well and say, she's a graded stakes winner on dirt. If they get even a placing here, I think the connections will be thrilled. But if you get a graded stakes winner on turf and dirt in her first four starts, whew, sky's the limit. I like Miss Bad Behavior in here. I think she's very, very consistent. This layoff is somewhat of a concern, but I think she's going to tuck in behind the speeds. Most of them breaking from the outside that are going to try to get into position. She's going to tuck in behind in the second or third flight with a mid-pack trip. And everything I've seen from her on turf, I think she's pretty good. I was impressed with her loss last time out in the Providencia. She did a lot of work up front. 21013 for me. Give me numbers. 14429 in the San Clemente Stakes. We'll throw up our offer one more time for DRF Bets members only. The Weekend Warrior Bonus Series earn up to $180 bonus for the Travers and Pacific Classic. Bet $25 to win on one horse in the first race at either or and or Del Mar and Saratoga each Saturday and Sunday. You get 10 uh, bonus points back uh, each time you participate, win or lose. Approximate post time for the San Clemente, 5.30 Pacific. Good luck.